have Miss Patricia Lane to, to give us our player. So please stand. Keep standing. I'd like to say good evening to everyone. And let's bow. Eternal God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father of glories, the Father in whom we derive our name as your children, O oh God. So, Lord, we come, God, on this day just to bless you, for this is the day that you have made, yes. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Now, Lord, as we assemble in this room on tonight, as the leaders of our city get together, O oh God, we pray, God, for the wisdom that you give, God, in order to run this city, God. Because, God, we know that without you, God, we can do nothing. So, Lord, we lift these men and women of God up to you now. We thank you, God, for what you've done in the past in their lives and through their lives. We thank you how you're using them to build a, this city, oh God, and the lives of the people here, God, to make the lives of the people much better. We thank you, oh God, for their families. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have shown and will continue to show yes, them Lord. when it comes to leading this city. Yes, we Lord. put this city in your hands, God, and we yes, thank you, God, Lord. that when, when the righteous are in office, yes, the Lord. people flourish, oh God. Yes, so, God, Lord. we need to have righteous hearts, righteous minds. Yes, we need to be people of righteousness, oh God, yes, so Lord. that we can promote justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you. We yes. thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Amen. 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 United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Miss City Clerk, will you call the roll? Mayor McClendon. Present. City Attorney Stevenson. Here. City Treasurer Souter Jr. Councilor Bruce? Here. Councilor Katz? Here. Councilor Croom? Here. Councilor Harris? Here. Councilor Holt? Here. Councilor Hutchinson? Councilor Muhammad? Councilor Monday? Here. Councilor Murray? Here. Councilor Wiggins? Here. You got eight out of ten present. Uh, I talked to Ms. Muhammad. She would not be able to make it. Uh, anyone here from Councilwoman Hutchinson? All right. I'm going to start with old business. See the attorney. It's an ordinance to repeal. It's an ordinance to repeal certain ordinances of the city of West Memphis, Arkansas. This ordinance is read for its third time. Um, is there any discussion? Motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? This ordinance passes. Ms. Clerk, would you get that ordinance a number, please? Ordinance number 2667-2667. The ordinance is 2267. 2667. No. 2667. It's 2667. All right. We're going to go to, uh, down to new business and, uh, I got the 2023 stay of the city. I'm going to need it just about. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. I, I apologize. I, I, I skipped all over that. In the bid openings, we had the bid opening for the West Memphis Utility Remote Worker Residency Recruitment Campaign from the Office of Economic Development. Uh, I think you all had a work session last Tuesday, and what are y'all wishes at this time? Motion to approve. Yeah, refer back to administration for disposition. A motion second. All, all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? It passes. All right, now I'm going to go back down to the uh, state of the city. I'm going to ask for just 30 minutes, and I'll cut it short with 29 minutes. <laughs> Testing, okay. First, I would like to thank all the citizens of the city of West Memphis, members of the city council, and all the elected officials. Once again, this city council has supported me with the many requests I have asked of them. I thank them for believing in this administration. We keep this city moving forward and giving our citizens something to be proud about. 
Our vision and purpose have always been to turn our attention into improving the city. We are committed to our residents. My administration remains committed and dedicated to strengthening our communities and improving the quality of life for all of our residents. We started our council meeting with prayer that God would guide our direction that we are always pleasing within his sight. I believe as council and mayor, we must continue to support the will of the people, be their voice and commit to making West Memphis a better city. I embrace the challenges of here. There may be hills to climb, but I look back to see all of the hills he have already allowed us to overcome. Wherever the challenge is, we must embrace it. Whether it's the opportunity for our children, our adults, or seniors, we must move now to make these things happen. I ask all of you to look 50 years down the road and ask yourself, did you make significant changes to make our city better? Did I commit to making the tough choices that my grandchildren and great-grandchildren are here in West Memphis because of the decision that I made? Was my, was my decision the right decision or was it the popular decision? Did I think outside the box to make decisions that made a great impact on our community? West Memphis is a city that's filled with opportunities. There are going to be issues that need to be addressed. It really doesn't matter who is in the middle seat because it takes all of us to make West Memphis be what we all know it can be. When I think about some of the things that our city family members does, it has been great for the city. Our community outreach director has came in and taken a new role, has continued to open her heart up to the people of this community and stand for what she feels is right and always be aid and assistance to the people of this city. And I thank Ms. Teresa Bowe for the job that she has done. When I focus on the many accomplishments of our city family members are achieving, this year coincides with our yearly goals. Keeping the city clean has definitely been a goal of mine. I remember every day I came in here, it was an issue with, with sanitation. When I got the new sanitation director, he knew my expectations. We changed the route to support the days of the week for a better daily cleaning. Then he brought leadership to the shop and gave direction and lifted morale. Our goal of keeping the city became a reality. Were there always room to improve, I believe we are on the right track. Our grass and demo team went into a trailer park and cleaned and demoed a dead area and gave it life. Took an area from darkness and despair to opportunity and light. The people were truly proud that the city had invested and were glad of not being forgotten because of their low income status. We were once able to promote housing. We are now able to promote housing and encourage building in that community. Our planning department now can promote housing and encourage new builders to build, has brokered deals to take ownership of existing properties they have also focused on areas that may have been overlooked for some time and started a functioning land bank. Yes, our focus has been on cleaning the city up from east to west. This feeling has always been echoed by members of this very council. Making it more pleasing, wherever in you enter, you can be proud. Yes, I have enforced some, some of the very laws you all have written whether it is residential or commercial. We must set a standard of expectation that never been here before. If the citizens don't expect greatness, why would anyone else come here and expect the same? We have started educational classes to help with home buying because we understand that homeowners take a little more pride in their homes than someone who's renting. Yes, we do all hold landlords accountable, and not just making money, but providing a home for those who are unable to buy now, but a comfortable housing situation to the families and the outer community. This year, we have some goals. First, 
My goal is to make West Memphis become a friendly place to do business. Set a standard of how we can help with your business, help guide businesses and entrepreneurs through a smooth transition and beginning and starting here in West Memphis. Our fire department has taken their service to the next level by creating a junior firefighting program for our inner city youth to expose them to what they do in the fire service, preparing a level, a level of responsibility to our young people who may want to serve in the community in a fire capacity. Partner with Boys and Girls Clubs for job readiness and advocate for EMT courses in our local schools district. They have started their own nonprofit to gather funds to help them with other endeavors. Our fire department is doing an amazing job. Our parks and recreation department has taken our parks to the next level, planning yearly events, overseeing the completion of the high tower park improvements, upgrading and taking care of our existing park, completing the new inclusive park that's designed for our children with disability, which is key. When you think of our children, I always say that our children may make up 50% of our population, but to guarantee they are 100% of our future. But when I say our children, I mean all of our children. And when you are always, when you are able to address Down syndrome, autism, mental, physical, intellectual disabilities, SLD, speechness, blindness, uh, tra traumatic brain, and orthopedic impairment, it's always important that we get those children a place where they can begin to have fun and learn because they have to break down already so many social barriers within our community and we as a city has done a great job in making it possible for them to be able to do that. And I thank you guys for that. Getting ready to jumpstart renovation in our new Tilda Rogers complex. See, we are giving our young people something they can enjoy. See, we all know that the idle mind is a devil workshop. We are providing activities for our children to do things. We want our youth to have so much to do, not be active and involved in crime or other accelerable things that they should not be doing, but have an opportunity to be invested in what you all have made possible for the children of this city. When we want our youth to do something, we want them to be proud in what they do. <clears throat> it doesn't cross their mind of doing anything wrong because they are doing better here in our city. I will soon be coming to you guys with a bike pump track that we can serve, starting at our trailhead, something that will give our bikers a new form of activities, another recreation for our youth, and allow us to do much more cleaning on the east end of town. Our utility department has installed fiber in many parts of our city, giving our city a system and pathway to affordable internet. They have already started to provide internet service inside of the West Memphis Housing Authority, where some was not able to even <coughs> benefit from those services. And they are coming on down Broadway and it's gonna make sure that internet service is available to all of our parks. So all of the children throughout the city will be able to benefit from Wi-Fi in our park. They'll continue to improve the necessary services all while still maintaining some of the lowest rates, utility rates, in the city. I'm so proud of economic development. We have been swinging, for, swinging hard for a long time, being consistent, dedicated, and focused. I believe economic development has placed West Memphis in a situation where we can truly be proud, real soon. Family Dollar is official and ready to kick off with over a total of 600 new jobs. I met with these Family Dollar people on yesterday. Between starting April the 3rd to June, they will hire 435 people at Family Dollars. That's many of the families here within our community that if without work, some may be traveling to Memphis and other areas, some they probably want to be home, they will have an opportunity to get those jobs and continue to make up and provide a decent living for their families. So that's very big for me. This will allow families in West Memphis and surrounding areas to be gainfully employed, 
many more opportunities to be announced. I'm happy, and that's all I'm going to say, because I believe in NDAs. I'm proud that, for the first time in West Memphis history, our animal shelter is getting a new home. Through a private, public-private partnership with Southland, we were able to provide a new home for our director, Ms. Carey, who has done an awesome job, and her staff, giving a new sanctuary and care facility to all of our precious animals. The animal shelter has been an area that may have been overlooked for so, many, for so long, but it must, they must get the attention now that they have done an awesome job here in our city. And I thank them for what they have done. Once again, crime continues to decrease in our city. I thank the men and women who want to, who works hard to protect and serve our community. I thank the officers who are part of our community outreach, as well as the officers who are in the trenches and fight crime, those who are reducing gun crime in our community and maintain the level of protection in our city. Our police department, they may be some of the least people that get their attention. But I guarantee you, some of you may not, not you, but the people may not like our police officers. But when there's a trouble in our community, the first thing you want to see is a police officer. I can guarantee you, if something's going wrong, these officers right here are willing to put their lives on the line to save ours. So it may be what some may say, but I appreciate these ladies and gentlemen, and I'm always going to show them a level of appreciation for what they do for our community. The citizens believe in the message of hope, and they have believed in that message of hope for this community. Their actions have shown that they support this administration's actions making better decisions day to day. Yes, one crime is one crime too many, but not by my words, but by the facts to support them. In 12 of 13 categories, crime continues to drop by at least 40%. A&P continues to think outside the box with endeavors of showing the city's possibilities. When I think of the department heads, I'm happy of the direction we are going in. We have an individual that's here that get so less credit because it's suspective of her. But I can't do a lot of what I'm doing without the help and support from Ms. Tory Perry. When it comes down to keeping this city balanced, when it comes down to, I remember she told me one time when things was going, we're not going wrong, but when people are saying a whole bunch of things that just let the work, let the paperwork, let it show for itself. And last year, we completed our audit with no material findings. And my pressure back to her again, we're not just going to do it one year, we're going to do it back to back. Because that's the type of people that I have coming to work every day. I don't take credit for what happened. I, I give the credit to the 17 individuals who make this work, the 17 individuals who man the men and women of our city. And I give all 483 employers the credit because every person that comes to this city, some may do a little bit more than the other, but it takes all of them to make West Memphis tick. And I thank all the city employers for that. I reflect on my question to this council. How how we done everything we could to make this city great? As mayor, I'm always going to focus on ideals I'm going to meet with individuals to move the city forward. Now I'm asking this legislative body to get on board with me as you have and continue to help make things happen as you have always done. I understand you have a big role in legislating the city and overseeing a balanced budget. But I have an obligation also to administrate this city and a vision I believe God has given to me and I'm getting ready to invite you all to our Think Crazy meetings. Now, I Think Crazy means our meetings where I don't want to hear the safe ideal. I want to hear the ideals that you would think that would be unheard of, 
But with you all's help and support, we can make it happen. Because at the end of the day, I still have a governing body, which is you, that I still come in and report to, and it's going to take whatever ideas my staff give me to bring it here to you all to get it funded. So I'm going to depend on you all to do that because right now, when you look at every city around us, much smaller than us, don't have the opportunity that we are doing, are making the decision to do things that's greater than what we are done. Now I'm telling you all, in the next couple of months, you all gonna be smiling just like I'm smiling, and, and, and I can't smile as big as I'm smiling because they see me smiling, but you all gonna be so proud of what the men and women have done and what you all have continued, because you all have put us in this position to barely do this. I dare take credit of what happened in West Memphis. If you notice that every groundbreaking, I always name every member of this council. I always give you all the credit because I don't want to do it by, us, by myself. I want us to do it. Because if we can do it together, we will never fall. Because if we support and holding up one another, we will continue to be great. As for things you may not see, but I ask you that you believe in my direction, but follow your legislative and budget obligation. Every small city around us has taken ideas that I first have threw out, whether it's Cersei or it's Osaola, have taken those ideas, and some didn't follow for many different reasons. Let's continue to work together, but it's my goal that our, our legacy be submitted in history because of what we have done to help the people of West Memphis and this city. Let's stop being the city that's talking about change, but let's be in this, the city that's about change. Keep in mind, where can we be and where are we now? I'm going to come and ask you. I want you to think big. We all must understand we work for the people and not ourselves. This year, we are in a 2020 forward state of mind. Let's move West Memphis forward, 2020 forward, as we continue to make this city a better city. May God bless you, and thank you. Amen. All right, we're going to start. Uh, uh, old business. I'm gonna ask that um, who will read, make that motion to read by title only. Cause I don't think the attendant want to read all of them out. I make a motion that 0102 be read by title only. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. <clears throat> I just didn't want us to get out of the agenda before we went back and grabbed it. Can I get a motion and second to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are approved officially. All right. See the turn. This is an ordinance granting a lot split for the property located in the 10-06-09 West Memphis Irregular Lot Subdivision, Mound City Road. My foot suspend the, road, the rules and places on the second reading. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's your turn. There's an ordinance granting a lot split for the property located in the 10-06-09 West Memphis Irregular Lot Subdivision, Mound City Road. My thoughts suspend the rules to place on this third read. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's third reading of an ordinance granting a lot split for the property located in the 10-06-09 West Memphis Irregular Lot Subdivision, Mound City Road. I get a motion and second to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. What may I ask what the zoning is for this property? That's Mr. Bowman. Just out of curiosity, Mr. Bowman. If I understand correctly, I think the zoning is like a interstate corridor. I two. Yeah. So I uh, too, what can what can what types of business? Industry. Can, well, a, a, 
actually the proposed projects for these two sites is a large tract of land mm -hmm. between, um, I would say, it's south of I-40 and um, just adjacent to Mound City Road. It's a large tract of land in the floodplain area, and the property owner desires to put up billboards. But in order for them to put up a billboard, I told the developer and, and advised the contractors that you would have to subdivide the lot. So you would have to carve out a lot specifically for the billboard. When they initially went to the planning commission, they asked for four billboards. The planning commission felt that it was too many billboards in that one location, and it could be a site hindrance for anyone traveling along the interstate. So they recommended that they only sub subdivide the parcel into two lots and do two billboards. So this is actually the property south of 40, east of Mound City. Correct. And the railroad runs through that. Correct. Okay. Okay. The state highway department has to grant them approval for it, so ultimately they'll have the last say so. But they have to first come to the city of West Memphis's legislative body and go through the planning process to get permission to do it. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right. Uh, Ms. Tidicle, you want to call the roll? Councilor Bruce? Yes. Councilor Katz? Yes. Councilor Croom? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Holt? Yes. Councilor Hutchinson? Councilor Muhammad? Councilor Monday? Yes. Councilor Murray? Yes. Councilor Wheatless? Yes. It passes. Can we get that ordinance number? Ordinance number 2668. The number is 2668. Two, six, eight. Six, eight. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> O2, see the attorney? O2 is an order. Ordinance to establish fees for permits and inspections at residential rates and commercial and industrial rates within the city limits of West Memphis, Arkansas. Ooh. Well, I wish to read that out, or I, I would prefer a public hearing or anything or not. So yeah, I would prefer we just read it once and um, ask Mr. Bowman to kind of give us a briefing on what we're what we're doing here. Um, I've okay. already gotten, so what I did is I take pictures of our agenda and I posted on my Facebook, somebody may call me. And, okay. Uh, that came up on this last posting. So, so basically this is the permit fees that we changed a bit. It wasn't much. And then I came back to make an amendment on one particular permit fee. That one particular permit fee was for temporary enterprises. Typically, when we have a temporary enterprise like a food truck come into town, they have to re, reapply for a permit every 10 days. So it's like 10 bucks every 10 days or 30 bucks every 10 days. So to cut down on the amount of times that those temporary enterprises would have to come to City Hall, we wanted to extend the amount of time. So instead of every 10 days, it'll be $50 for every 30 days. That way we could keep track and govern the number of food trucks that are out there and on the different locations, excuse me, and we'll be able to check more frequently instead of having to do it every 10 days. It's hard to keep up with. So every 30 days is easier. It's a better way to manage it. And plus we wanted in, wanted to increase the amount of that permit for temporary enterprises. And so that's the only one that's changing. And actually it's an edit because originally when you all passed the permit fees previously, it was for six months, but we, that was an error. It was only supposed to be for one month, for 30 days. So instead of coming in and amending that entire ordinance, the legal department decided to repel the initial one and go ahead and do it again with the amendment and just do it at one time instead of having subsequent amendments to that original one. I need to ask you a question. It's, it's, it's similar, but it's kind of off this, so then we'll have any more questions about this. I think he explained it fairly. Oh. No, it doesn't involve firework. No, basically what I was going to ask, I would like for our department to get together and I guess do some type of educational 
training for individuals that want to come to our city and do some form of business. I remember just this past week, we got blasted on Facebook for a lot because of a food truck. I think the, mm -hmm. the seafood bowl. Correct. They came in, and, and they have to understand that if uh, the taco truck, uh, Zoe food truck, and all of them come and get licensed, you just can't pull up on Garrington Loan's property. Correct. Um, and just set up shop there. I mean, they have to pay just like everyone else has, has to be in. And I like for our people to understand and know what the rules are before you all the phone calls we get up here. Then I mean, I, I, I got blessed. I didn't know. I, I, I got blessed. I didn't even know what was going on in the situation. But simply, I, I think uh, when I inspect that, do you got a, a, a privilege license? I mean, if it's ten dollars and you got permission from. The landowner and and I guess your uh, yeah city license, you can go down there and get it, and you can make as much money as you want to make. But don't run the city and say the city is being low down and this blah blah right. blah when you haven't taken care of your business mm -hmm. to make sure that you are legal to do the things. Because if if uh, I, I I think about all the food trucks that they all I see all of them up in here. Uh, Miss Mun, your daughter, I see her. They all I see them all get. License. If they all get licensed, what makes you think you don't have to come in and, and do the next the same thing they're doing? I mean, if they got five minutes to come in here and and get with uh our, city, uh, our clerk and make sure that everything is where it needs to be at, you got to do the same thing and and don't don't blame us because you ain't taking care of your business. That's enough on that. Yeah, <laughs> and essentially, this will make it easier for someone that has a food truck because they can actually operate for a longer period of time. But it'll also make it easier for us to track them. Instead of every 10 days, we could just simply look and see if they had received a license within the past 30 days. Exactly. And so did you all feel we want to read this out or do you all still want to do the, the, the public meeting or something? Or uh, what, what are you all's wishes? I, I, personally, I, I, I don't think we need to read it out because... Like I said, it's going to circulate around, and there may be some other questions that we could get answered before we read it out. What I'd like to do is read it out twice today and oh, and finish it out the next meeting. Sure. Because I'm kind of concerned a little bit about We know every time we increase the price on anything, it's going to be the consumer that's going to take the, take the uh, charge. And usually it's going to be more than the say the twenty dollars. I mean, we're charging apartment, yes, but that particular part is going to pay that apartment. But also the consumer is going to increase. What is buying the property or? Well, what we'll do, I guess, to keep everything going, we we'll just ask to read out a second time, and then we will have some type of public forum. And if anyone come in, then we'll wait till the next council meeting to read it out. That that good with everyone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I get a motion and a second to further suspend the rules for places on the second reading? So moved. Second. All right, Aye. Opposed? To the attorney? Second reading of an ordinance to establish fees for permits and inspections at residential rates and commercial and industrial rates within the city limits of West Memphis, Arkansas. All right. We're going to... Um, Come back in two weeks and I'm going to ask you, Mr. Bowman, to get something together, so some type of public hearings for the people that may need to get some understanding. Can I ask the question before our next council meeting in two weeks? Could, right. Mayor, may I ask Mr. Bowman one, one other question about a uh, certificate of uh, occupancy? That was on the agenda, it seemed like, two weeks ago. Yes, actually. So how, how is it going to change? Well, actually, we... As, as I previously mentioned, this council approved all of those permit right. fees. We only wanted to go back and amend the one for temporary enterprises because of the length of time that their license would, would last or their permit would last. That's all we wanted to change. Okay. But this body did originally pass everything else, including the error which said that the temporary license would only last. It, it would be $50 for six months. We wanted to amend that to say $50 for 30 days. That's, that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to move down to permission request. 
Permission for the mayor to sign a second amendment agreement to power supply agreement with West Memphis Utilities. I have Bob to come here and just answer any question publicly to the people if they have any, or you all may have any questions. Can you give just a quick explanation of what we're doing here? Sure. So this is a request to amend the power supply agreement. Um, so basically what happened is in January of this year, MISO changed the rules from an annual construct to a seasonal construct for our capacity requirements. As a load serving entity, we are responsible for securing enough capacity to serve all the homes in the West Memphis, in the city of West Memphis. So this amendment is to <clears throat> purchase the additional capacity because of the rule change in the, in the winter months versus letting it go to market. So what we're trying to do is trying to avoid having to pay, having to deal with the price volatility when we go to a market. I think the winter storm Uri in 20 of 21 where the electric rates went so high and it cost so much money to secure that capacity. So we're trying to secure it preemptively so that we can control the costs. Were there any other questions about this? All right. Thank you. The motion is second to approve. So, second. All in favor, aye. Uh, opposed? It passes. Thank you Thank very you, much. Also, will you come forward? Tiger, the motion is second to add this to the agenda, this amendment on the date. So moved. Second. All in favor, We're just putting 2664 back on the agenda. Yeah, in order or to make amendment. the amendment. Yeah. Yes. All right. And got a motion, I got a motion to second. Got All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's added to the agenda. And basically what we want to do, just amend it to stay to May the 1st instead of April the 1st. April 1st, yeah. Yeah, uh, correct. And what we didn't do last time was have a separate vote on the amendment. So that's what we're doing is just voting on the amendment from April 1st to May 1st. I think it's self-explanatory. Do anyone need to ask any questions? Will be good? So uh, moved. Second. All in favor, aye. Uh, Opposed? The amendment is approved. Thanks, Board. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move down to uh, committee reports, but the first thing I asked you all about was the streets that we had on the agenda. Well, it was not on the agenda, but um, I want you all to oversee them before I send them out back to Rhonda to be uh, go out for bed along with the 5th Street, 300 feet of 5th Street. That's the street that we were asking for. Yeah, uh, as soon as the bids come back in, we can at yeah. least find out what we can and can't do. Exactly, because uh, it, may, it may come back at 1.7 million if we have to reduce it again. But Yeah, please, uh, let's go ahead and that. permission request to get the bids out. Okay. I get a second on that? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, well, this uh, we're going to move forward with uh, getting it beat out. Um, also, um, we're going to go with the chamber first. Chamber of Commerce, are they minutes? They had nothing new to report. Okay. Airport? Uh, the airport met this morning at 8 a.m. And... Um, <coughs> Uh, Garver Engineers uh, Engineering reported that the estimated start date for the North Apron Rehab uh, project is April the 22nd, and it will be estimated the date to close that project will be August the 28th. Uh, also, the Jet Fuel Rehab project is still set for April. Uh, moving over to the uh, contract, you know, the... the uh, Engineering contract with the airport uh, that uh, there were two individual firms that applied for that for that uh, position out there. It's a three-year contract, and the uh, commission um, interviewed both of the engineering firms and decided to award Garver the three-year contract coming up. So that concludes the report. Okay. Were there any other committees who had met? No, but I have a, I have a request if I can get it. Miss Anthony is here with a project with a parks department. Uh, it's fellowshipping with uh, uh, diabetes awareness. Can I can I get her to speak on that? Can I get a motion and second? Miss Anthony to the agenda. So moved. All right, bye. Opposed. 
Ja. Ja. Ga voor me zetten. Good evening, good afternoon. On behalf of the Parks and Rec Department, in absence of my director, he had another uh, event took this afternoon. So I'm going to speak on the Diabetes Awareness Awareness Expo, in which we'll be, we will be bringing to Tilden Rogers Park March the 30th in partnership with uh, Diabetes Care and Awareness. What we're going to have is uh, free health screenings and consultation, cooking demos, how to start your home garden, garden and fitness demos, food, fun, definitely games for all ages, uh, healthy snacks will, will be provided. Uh, on the stage, we will have experts from the Agricultural Department that will provide information on you starting your own home garden. Uh, also, we'll have a dietitian, a pharmacist, and a dentist to give us some more information. This event, we were going to have our own um, a health and awareness event in the park scheduled for May. I think uh, Ms. Lorraine Muhammad had given you our agenda at a glance, but since this is Diabetes Month, we just want to go ahead and put something together in partnership with Diabetes Care and Awareness this month. So that's what we'll be having on March 30th at Tilden Rogers Park. Also, the parks will be having a Easter egg hunts again. We just had one at Tilden Rogers from the city, not Tilden Rogers, Worthington Park with the city. We will be having one at Tilden Rogers also on March 30th. Next Wednesday, we will be at Grimsley Park. Next Thursday, we will be at Franklin Park. And also on the 30th, we will be at Matthews Park. Something for family and especially for the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anthony. Mayor, I had uh, spoke to you uh, about, the, <clears throat> about the stage. They will be needing the stage at Tilden Rogers Park. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I will, I will give you Jim Jackson on that, like we talked. Also, uh, in our earlier meeting, well, not earlier meeting, but in pre-council, uh, we were talking about some things for, for public works. Uh, Dr. Bruce actually brought it up about we looking at finally trying to close some ditches in on War Two and War Five. I'm also going to add War One and Shady Grove and War Three. I, I, well, we, we're going to do a review of the city. And then I'm going to work just to get you all a cost because, I mean, if you all provide the finances for me, I surely would do it. So I just want to make sure that we're going to do War, war 1, Shady Grove, War 3, War 2, War 5. I don't, I don't know that War 4 have any. I think all they may be closed in War 4, but the other four wars definitely. <clears throat> Ms. Murray, do you have no open ditches? I haven't seen that. Okay. So I think War 1, War 2, War 3, and War uh, 5, we'll look at it again. And I'll get you all the cost analysis in a minute. So uh, I'll give a war and see what we can come up with on that to see what the prices may be. OK, thanks, Mayor. And basically, uh, to piggyback on what you stated, you know, uh, this goes back to probably 2012 when, when uh, this first came up, uh, the city did 8th Street, 9th Street, part of 9th Street. They did uh, 12th Street, did 14th Street. And so this is kind of a continuation of what the council had talked about doing and, and, and coming back and providing uh, streets with sidewalks in those areas. Because the people are really, you know, it, it, like I say, it, it's a lot to have open ditches. Uh, and then with post office not delivering uh, mail to houses, now you have to put mailboxes at a ditch. So I think the people in this city really deserve better. So I'm, I'm looking forward to us uh, working on this project together. Mayor, if I may, Ward 3 is in two areas, basically. It's the Center and Worthington area, and it's the Avalon between Dover and Balfour area for the Marion School District area in there. 
That's the ones that are open. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. And I will get you off some numbers. I end up saying next week, but give me a little time to get them to get out of the cabin. Um, well, any other? I have another small question. Go ahead. The dog park over <clears throat> off of that Vanderbilt. The oh, dog right. park. I see it was a truck or car or something hit it. Is that? Yeah, we we had an issue. Uh, uh, the chief here, uh, he can explain to it, but it was, it was an incident happened where it was a uh, safety said just a shooting, and then I guess they ran through it and hit it and knocked it up. And we 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 get numbers and everything that they can take care of and looking to see what insurance the vehicle had. So we definitely want to get it taken care of. We just kind of going through the process. Anyone else have anything? Uh, all right. Uh, I had no presentations. The uh, the uh, West River Christian uh, baseball team. They uh, they had the council due to the fact that most of the kids are out for spring break, so they'll be here at the next meeting. The school is back in. Uh, my sister request person individual came, but she had to leave and take her some things. So uh, I have no one for citizen request. Uh, unless you all want to hear. I have something. I just want to reiterate something on behalf of the clerk's office. The food truck, it's only a $10 difference because they just have to get it every two days, Mr. Hope. So it's not getting passed on. But Mr. Bowman did speak to the clerk's office. It actually is actually going to be beneficial for both departments because we're supposed to collect advertising and promotion taxes from these trucks. And by them having spot placement, we're, we're still trying to track them down just to get what's owed to the city. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. All right. Uh, I, I have one question. Okay, so when, when uh, they come in and get the, the uh, certificate, so, well, once they get it, do they have that with them on site? Okay. Okay. Buy and check it. Okay. So can, I, can that not be get, gotten on the front end? They have, we collect a privilege license fee that they pay one time. Okay. Mr. Bowman's office will monitor them. Um, they also have to make sure they give them a health care license. This is how we work together both the departments. And it just makes it a lot easier. But it, you have to earn it before you can afford it. And okay. that advertising and promotion money Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Unless y'all want to hear the state of the city again. <laughs> Can I get a motion to second to adjourn? So moved. All the people, aye. Opposed. Good seeing you guys and ladies. Thank <laughs> you.